Hey guys, welcome back to this series of tutorial on electrical network design. In this tutorial, we will briefly look at the process of how to select a suitable current transformer that will be able to provide adequate protection for our short circuit current on this bus bar and all the other bus bar as we have seen. Uh, in the previous tutorial, we saw how to calculate this short circuit current. There is a process that is involved for getting them. So if you haven't watched those tutorials, please uh, look on the description below. There is a link for those tutorials. And if you haven't yet subscribed to Simtech channel, please consider doing so right now and hit the bell to stay up to date with new tutorial. Thank you in advance as you going to hit that button. Okay, so what is a current transformer? A current transformer, as we see here, this is basically a physical representation, sort of, but this is an electrical uh, symbol. Now, current transformer is a measuring device, whether it is used for protection or metering it is a measuring device that is used to safely reproduce a low level current that accurately represent a high level current for the purpose of protection and metering so the high level current will be the current that will be passing through here so this could be our bus bar that is a primary current that will be flowing there and that primary current will be proportional. Now the secondary current that will be passing here, IS, will be proportional to IP, which is a primary current. So it could be just the load current that is flowing, a normal current, or it could be the short circuit current, but it should be proportional to what we will be getting here. Now, how does this process take place? Now, according to the process of transforming the current, obviously. Now, this is the same process as normal transformers work, a voltage transformer that work in the phenomena of uh, electromagnetic induction. Now, according to Ampere's law, together with Maxwell equations, it says that if a magnetic field is integrated around a closed loop of wire, the value of that integral is equal to the net current enclosed by the loop of the current transformer. So this basically means the current that is going to be produced based on the magnetic field that is produced by the primary current will be a representation of the current that is passing through here. That's in short what these equations entail. Now, there is a lot of literature around that. Uh, the scope of this tutorial is not on that. We will be doing some tutorial on those in the coming days. Okay, now moving forward, the current on the secondary is directly proportional to the current flowing through the center of the core. Now, what is the current that flowing through the center of the core? That is IP. So, this is a core. Now, the current flowing through the center of the core is our bus bar current. Now, this current on the secondary IS is proportional to this current. So you just have to work in terms of the ratio. This one is gonna be a small one. The number of turn here will determine how much you get here. That's where our turn ratio comes into the equations. So for example, for a 1000 to five ratings, that, that means you have 1000 primary five amps rating or 200 to one, this means a 1000 amp flowing on this core here on the primary will produce a 5 amp here on the secondary. And that 5 amp will be able to be measured by this ammeter that's uh, connected here. In our case, this is going to be a protection current transformer, not the metering one. It will be a protection one because it needs to send a signal to the the relays and the relay need to trap the circuit breaker. So in this case, the protection CT must be used in combination with a tripping device, like our IDMT and the circuit breaker, to trip the breaker when there is 
an overload or a fault on the system as we have uh, seen in the previous tutorial. Now the current transformer must step down from a high primary current to a low level current. Those basically mean as per transformer properties since the current is going down, the voltage must go up, okay, to maintain the caveat in and the caveat out. So you have to maintain the power in must be the power out. So as your voltage, your current is stepping down, so the voltage must go up. So VA in must be equal to VA out. So we've seen that already. So this is why it's not safe. So because the voltage is going up there. Now imagine you already have this bus by here that's got 132 kilovolts. So potentially you have 132 kilovolts on this uh, on the primary of these current transformers. Now because now the current is going down, so the voltage is going to increase. That means the 132 kilovolt could be several hundreds of kilovolt on the on the poles of this current transformer. So what does it mean if does is left open for say if there is no current transformer here i mean if there is no ammeter here this is open you come and touch it that's what you get you're going to get probably five times this depends of what the ratio is here and that's going to shock you so this is why if this is not being used you have to short it with a wire or a jumper never leave a current transformer open circuited even if it's a small current transformer, it's a very dangerous leaving it open circuited. Now, there is also an important property of the current transformer that's called a knee point voltage. Now, the knee point voltage uh, means that when the CT operates, as you can see here, this is the voltage and this is the current. So this is a voltage, that's a current. And if you can see, this is very linear so it's following okay now outside this point here it's no longer following it's no longer linear you can see there is a curve now that's why it's called a knee point voltage so when the ct operate outside it's a rating that's when we get to that point because once we are in this point as long as we are in this region here we are operating within the rating of the current transformer but Suddenly, when a high current that exceeds the rating starts to pass, we get out of the linearity region. We get into the knee point voltage region. So this happens when the output current stops following the input current. So we know that the output current, which is IS, is following what the input current is doing. So it's linear. But now when the output current stops following the input current, we now reach the saturation region, this region here. So we're no longer in the linear zone or the good zone. We're now in the danger zone. Why is it is a danger zone? Because it doesn't matter what that current is now. The output will no longer going to give an accurate representation. We could be having 100 million amps there. This secondary IS will not going to tell us what exactly is that current. So there is protection is lost so you don't have your protection anymore so that's what we call a saturation region when the current transformer get to that point it's become useless because it's not protecting anymore so the purpose of the protection is to ensure that as soon as we get out of this linear region once we get to the midpoint voltage there your system must have trapped already to provide protection because if it's failed to do that then you know your protection is not working so now we move on to see how we're going to uh, determine the 10 ratio for our transformer that must be according to the magnitude of the fault current that we have on each one of these bus bar so then our current transformer ratio must be determined using the calculated fault current that we have on each of these uh, bus bars now this is to ensure the protection of the transformers remember in this case of bus bar 3 we have a transformer here that's uh, uh, converting that's stepping down from 132 to 66 
kilovolt. So we need to protect a transformer in case there is a short circuit on the bus bar. So this CT ratio will be important in order to ensure the protections of the transformers and other equipment that are connected onto the bus bus. So the current transformers selected here have to be able to protect our transformers and other equipment that are connected on the bus bar. Now there is another property of the current transformer that is called accuracy class factor or accuracy limit. Now in this series of tutorial we have selected the accuracy factors of 10p10. Now what that means is we are providing a 10% maximum accuracy limit of error. So which means the, the measurement that we're going to be getting at the secondary will be plus or minus 10% the actual representation so that what the 10 mean now the other 10 means that our rated primary current must be multiplied 10 times so what that's actually what it means it's 10 times the rated current so so what it means is instead of having a ratio of 1 1822 to 1 so basically that's the primary current and that's what the secondary current now the tens will then divide the rated current by 10 to give us 182 with a ratio of 1 so that way you can get a smaller current transformer rather than getting a big one that will take all these turns ratios here. So you're going to get a smaller current transformer. But now you're not going to get the current transformer that gives you exactly this 182 to 1 ratio. So there are already current transformers that's got standard values of current transformers that's already designed and being sold as manufacturers. So for instance, for, for 182, you're going to get a 200 to 1 ratio now this is a standard uh, ct ratio so that is what you're going to select it for the particular pass bar so your current transformer will give you a ratio error of 10 percent based on what the accuracy limit factor that you choose that is regardless even if your fault here reach 10 times this value that you have you're still going to get a 10 percent accuracy of error and you know as we've seen previously so the CT will then reach a saturation and it will basically become uh, useless. So that is a very important factor to remember. And so that 10% margin of tolerance will actually even ensure more reliability for your selected current transformer. And reliability is very important because you don't want to be sending false triggers into your relay coil and that's going to be tripping your circuit breaker even if there is no fault so you need a reliable system so the margins of accuracy is important so that is uh that is basically what you need in order to select your current transformer there is a lot more that can be said about it so based on that we then have the selected uh current transformer ratios based on the particular current on every one of these bus bars with our selected accuracy factor limit so before ending this tutorial let's just see how this system actually operate so in case of a fault here you're going to have a large current flowing now this is our current transformer now the current transformer based on your ratio you're now going to have a current that will be present here at the relay coil now the relay coil is now going to be energized so if that's a one amp nominal relays now you've now reached your short circuit current now you got a one amp now flowing here so now the relay is going to trigger and the contact will pull and that's going to close this circuit here. Once the circuit close, 
you now have this DC source that's already ready here that's now going to flow like this. Now, that's going to flow and create a current that's going to flow on the coil will energize that coil again and the coil will now trip the release mechanic of the mechanism of the circuit breaker. So that's basically how this entire system works. That's what we're going to implement here by selecting a proper shots uh, uh, current transformer and IDMT relays and the circuit breaker. That's what we're going to achieve. The same operation right here. So that's basically how protection are ensured on bus bus. So this is a fundamental. There is a lot of things like uh, the, there is new technology that are coming on now. You can include intelligence devices and other various apparatus. But here, what you see here is the fundamental of bus bar protections of your network system. So guys, if you like this tutorial, you found something useful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also leave your comment down below the comment line. Anything you want to ask, we will uh, gladly answer to your comment. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial. Cheers.